Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming back at you with a Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to do a Bone Devil. I don't know if you can see that. We're going to do a Bone Devil uh, from... I thought this was Nolzers, but it's actually Deep Cuts. Uh, I think it's the same company, actually. Uh, this is WizKids.com uh, Unpainted. Right? Uh, very similar to the Nolzers. Uh, models. All right, guys, and I'm going to prime it with bleached bone from Citadel. This is an old spray can, and uh, it's got very little left in it. I think this is going to be the last model I get to use with this spray can. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, prime it with bleached bone. Okay, and once that's coated, there's really only a couple of steps left. I'm going to um, wash it with a brown, a mid-brown wash. That's gonna go all over the entire model. And then when that dries, this is probably gonna be the longest step is because the inks tend to take a little bit extra time to dry, maybe about 30 minutes to an hour. And then I will come back and I'm going to do a dry brush with the War Paints Skeleton Bone, right? And so, so the I mean, I could have primed that with white, black, any color, really, because I'm going to wash it brown to get down into all the cracks, and then I'm going to dry brush it with skeleton bone. And that's really going to be it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do any kind of red in the skull, in the eye sockets or something. I might. And I was thinking about doing maybe some orange... Uh, for some lava flow on the base. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Uh, I've been thinking about it. All right, so let's go ahead and pop this thing out of the out of the packaging here. Now the bone devil is actually a devil. And it says he's already pre-primed. This plastic is already pre-primed. Um, that is true. I want to get this hook a little bit out of it. There we go. I don't like it being tucked down on his shoulder. I wanted it to be kind of like up here. So you can heat this up in some hot water and reshape it uh, if you want to do that. And it'll hold its shape really nice. Okay, and it's supposed to already be primed. There actually might be a little bit of rags on there. I didn't really look at this model very closely, but it looks like there's rag straps on the legs. I might paint those a different color once I'm done dry brushing with the bone. Because it's kind of like a demonic skeleton with a tail, like a, yeah. All right, so let's get rid of this plastic. Now, to assemble this, I'm going to use the DAP Rapid Fuse, because that's pretty much the only glue that I use ever. Now, once I've discovered it, that's the only glue. Okay, I kind of like this base. This wizard's base is really cool. I like it. Uh, two by two. You can't see it. 2x2, two two, making it a large model. Let's go ahead and I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to score the bottom of this. And then I'm going to put some DAP rapid fuse on it. And then... Center it. Apply a little bit of pressure, okay. Hold it for about 15 seconds. Give it a few seconds, give it a few seconds. And I think it's fully, it's not fully cured, you can tell, but it is, it has gripped Okay, we're going to let that super glue dry a little bit. 
That's step one. Yeah, I just want to bring this up a little bit closer so you could see what I'm talking about. This strap here. I think that's a leg strap. I think that's fabric, like maybe from a pant that he used to wear. We'll figure it out. Once we prime it and once we put the wash on, that'll really, and once I dry brush it, it'll kind of really stand out. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go prime it and then I'll be right back. All right, so now I went ahead and used the bleached bone from Citadel and I had used every little bit out of the can and we had gotten uh, pretty good coverage on my on my uh, bone devil here. So now before I do the washing, what I am going to do is take this orange. You can see it's kind of a pure orange. It's kind of bright and that, that's fine. I'm going to paint that onto the base. Okay, so bear with me here. So this should go on fairly straightforward. This is nothing, no unique technique or anything. I'm just going to take my orange and I'm going to paint the base and the figure base as well as the model base. And I'm going to paint it up as maybe lava from hell. You know what I mean? Like it's walking on lava or something. All right. Going on pretty straightforward. It is pretty thinned out when it came out of the bottle. I didn't add any water or anything. And you might have noticed, I got a little orange on his foot. I'm not too concerned with that because it's going to look like maybe the lava got on his feet. Which they would if he's walking in lava. Okay. Now, I don't know if you noticed, uh, maybe not, but I am painting with brush strokes uh, along the length of this uh, figure base. on both sides. As if the lava was in a stream or in motion, not just a puddle of lava. You know what I mean? All right. And if you ever wanted to, you could put like some clear texture on that or something to make it uh, stand out even more. But that's fine, just like that. All right, let me let this part dry I'm going to have to let this dry for a few minutes uh, before I do any washing. All right, I'll be right back. All right, now so the orange is mostly dry and the primer here is all dry. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to apply the wash. All right, so give me a second, get my wash prepared. Uh, 50-50 uh, quick shade wash uh, mid brown uh, and and drops of water so we're going to mix that up it's still going to be fairly strong and then we're going to go ahead and just apply the wash 100% to the bone devil, all of its wings, its chest cavity, its face, its uh, scorpion tail, I can see that eight drops is not going to be enough. If 
I just don't like to overdo it. Actually, it might be enough. Uh, maybe not. Because I still have to do the lava flow. did the bone devil completely but not well actually I got quite a bit on the lava flow but we're gonna go ahead and uh, add a couple more drops was literally just two more drops. <laughs> and again, I am using brush strokes that are lengthwise with the flow of the lava, the current. So now we just got to let that dry. I got to set that off to the side, not mess with it. Let it dry, and then we'll be right back. Wash on the figure. Now you'll notice that the figure became brown, right? Because the wash drew it down. But really, all I was looking for was to get the wash inside the cracks and crevices of this model so that when I went to do the dry brush, it would still have the shadow effect. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, prepare my skeleton bone part of your paint. And then, and then on the model, we're going to take long strokes, dragging the brush across raised areas where the dry brush will p or the uh, the raised areas will pick the paint off of the stiff brush now remember you always want to do multiple layers you don't want to force anything into a single layer it's better to build up when you're doing dry brushing it's better to build up do a slow build if that's what if that makes sense And I flip my brush over. Now 
Now, because this model is a plastic model, it's kind of flexible. Um, like, as you can see, I'm hitting this and it's moving, or I'm hitting the wings, they're moving. back and his head the rib cage now remember also whenever you do a dry brush technique you don't want the brush to go with the grain of whatever the model is you want to go cross grain so like on the fingers you want to go across the back of the you see the uh, the wrist or the uh, forearm bone. You don't want to go lengthwise because then the brush would, the bristles would get down inside the crack. You want to go across. So only the raised area is, is hit with paint. Okay. And remember, multiple attempts. Dry brushing, you got to have patience. It's basically a test of your endurance <laughs> Ooh, that 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 really looked that really changed the subject matter right there the bone devil starting to come around guy looks really good. With that brown wash shining through, making this bone devil, making the bones of this bone devil look very kind of dirty, bony, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's good right there. Now, if I wanted to add just a little bit extra color, I could go in and paint these rags. Um, one artist is saying that that's extra flesh wrapped around there. Another artist is saying that that's old clothes. But I don't think the Bone Devil was born a human that wore clothes and grew up. I don't think that's anything like that. And then the sinew coming off of the wings is actually just extra flesh dro you know drooping off of there um and i saw some people paint that up red or flesh tone and i don't think 
it would it looks good like that i think it looks good just like this actually less is more as they say right okay so i'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and get a close-up view in a moment all right so this is the bone devil just using simple paint technique right what do we do we primed it with bleach bone we washed it with medium brown and we went back in and we dry brushed it with skeleton bone and that's pretty much all we did not counting the base all right guys um that was the bone devil I'm going to be using this in my D&D game here coming up real soon. And uh, keep tuned in on our channel. We do all kinds of D&D models, but we also do historicals. And if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification icon for whenever I go live or if I upload a video. And uh, I'll see you next time.